My name is Jeff Morgan. I am from Dallas, Texas, and very briefly, I'm going to go over a decision that was rendered uh, today by Judge Mary Brown of the 301st Judicial District in Dallas County, Texas. And this decision pertained to the case that is commonly referred to as Save James. Uh, Save James, a case in which a young child, I believe nine years old right now, that his mother wants to begin the process of transitioning him into a girl. Uh, James is a boy and his brother, his twin brother Jude is also a boy. But anyway, this case came in front of Judge Mary Brown and this was in July, I believe July the 2nd or so, uh, the case appeared before her and she issued her ruling today. Now first off, this is an ex parte uh, temporary restraining order. So all of the parties are not required to be there. Uh, one of the parties can be there, none of the parties can be there, uh, but the party against whom the order is being written is not required to be there. And in this instance right here in this in this case, but the petitioner was Ann Georgilis. By the way, Ann Georgilis is a pediatrician. This is Ann right here. She's an MD. She's a board certified pediatrician with the American Board of Pediatrics, and she has her own practice. Uh, this is Ann Georgilis. Now, Ann is the one who is trying to, to transition James from a boy into a girl who started that process, the, the social process right now, which more than likely would lead to him taking drugs and then also um, possibly becoming castrated in the future. Jeff, the father, does not want to see this happen to his son. I have met both James and Jude. They are both boys. On their birth certificates, they are listed as males, as boys. Uh, their names, their legal names, are uh, James and Jude. But regardless of what the, the birth certificate says, uh, Anne Georgilis has decided that she wants to take James and say that he is really a she, and she unilaterally, on her own accord, has started to call him Luna. So this is a, a, a situation where, again, she's wanting to, to see the, the boy be to be socially accepted as a girl. Now this case appeared in front of Judge Mary Brown and Mary Brown uh, ordered that the clerk of this court should issue a temporary restraining order restraining the respondent, Mr. Younger, restrained from any possession of or access to the children. This would be J.A. and J.U. This would be James and Jude, the twin brothers. Um, Judge Mary Brown has now prohibited him from having any possession or access to the children unless it is strictly supervised by a supervisor designated by the petitioner or ordered by the court. It is further ordered that Ann Georgilis is permitted to withhold information from the father, Jeff Younger, regarding the children's extracurricular activities, school functions, school enrollment, counseling and medical care until further orders of the court are entered. Basically what Mary Brown has done, ex parte, without Jeff having an opportunity to be there or anything like that, she has basically said that um, Jeff is going to be kicked out of the kids' lives unless he is strictly supervised and that the mother, uh, Ann Georgilis, the pediatrician who uh, obviously has some confusion but when she calls her male boy a girl and dresses him in girl's clothes and refers to him by a name Luna, which is not his legal name. But the judge is siding with Ann Georgilis. Now this restraining order is effective immediately. And immediately as, as of August the 4th, 2021. And it shall continue in force and effect until entry of further order from the 7221 hearing or until it expires by operation of law. This order shall be binding on the respondent, but it's also supposed to be binding upon the respondent's agents, servants, or empl and employees. I'm not sure exactly who they are. And on those persons in active concert or participation with them who receive actual notice of this order by personal service or otherwise. I'm not a legal person, obviously, and I don't know this legalese and this mumbo jumbo that Judge Mary Brown is writing here. I The first thing I thought is, is she putting a restraining order upon me as well? I mean, this makes no sense whatsoever. I don't understand how the idea that you are not supposed to visit with James and Jude except strictly supervised by a supervisor designated by petitioner of the court. I'm not sure how this restraining order is effective upon persons in active concert or participation with them 
who receive actual notice of this order by personal service or otherwise. But it sounds to me like what she's trying to do, even though it wasn't spelled out this way, I think she's trying to keep everybody uh, silent about this issue. I think she's trying to silence the community so that nobody talks about this issue. I don't know because to me the whole order itself is, is really strange and unclear. But what I found very interesting was this. This is the extraordinary relief that Judge Mary Brown, uh, Judge Mary Brown is, is given this extraordinary relief because the court, having examined and the verified pleadings and allegations of the petitioner, finds that the respondent's actions, as alleged by the petitioner, would place the children in imminent harm and endanger the children's emotional and physical well-being were the children to remain in his presence. This is ludicrous. This is absolutely a lie. This judge has no idea what she is talking about. Once again, I have been with both the respondent, Mr. Younger, and his children. There was never anything like that that actually took place. I would like to know where, how Judge Mary Brown came up with the idea that unless she put, she put this temporary restraining order on and kept the father away from the lives of the children, of his two sons, how that would, would somehow protect the children. They have never been in imminent harm when they have been with their father. Their emotional and physical well-being have not been endangered. And Mary Brown is making the stuff up. Now, what I want to know about Mary Brown is, besides everything else, where does she get this experience from? How does she know this? Is Mary Brown somebody who somehow magically knows that this child is in imminent harm? She has the allegations, the pleadings and the allegations of the petitioner. And what's very interesting to note about this is that when you go to a court, an anti-family court, as we have it in the state of Texas, and especially as you go before some of these judges like Judge Mary Brown, that they just take a look at the pleadings and the allegations and they accept them all as truth. And they think that somehow I need to act to protect somebody. The technical term for what Mary Brown is doing in this case is called crap. Nothing, there's nothing else about it. Her order is crap and her reasoning is crap because if you will notice, there's no findings of fact anywhere and there's no conclusions of law. She is just making this up. Mary Brown, Judge Mary Brown, or should I say Tyrant Mary Brown, uh, Tyrant Mary Brown is just putting something out there for no reason whatsoever. This is something that I do not even believe she has the right to do, just to make something up, make up an order because somehow she feels that way today. There is no way that these children are in imminent harm. In fact, the opposite would be true. Uh, James would be in imminent harm by being placed solely with Ann Georgilis. Ann Georgilis, the pediatrician mother who wants to change, who wants to uh, present James, the boy, as a girl. Tell me that's not causing harm to him. Tell me that's not child abuse. Really? And yet Judge Mary Brown or Tyrant Mary Brown is siding with this abusive behavior and is ordering that the father is not allowed to see his children. And I know, I know, again, I've met them in person. They love their father. They want to be with their father. They are boys. They play with boy stuff. They are boys. And, but Judge Mary Brown or Tyrant Mary Brown is siding with the confused pediatrician and Georgilis and somehow wanting to uh, pretend that James is a girl and not a boy. This is absolutely ludicrous. But this is what we have come to expect from our family courts. And Judge Mary Brown is not the worst of them. Uh, this is just typical, almost what we expected to see from this type of a fake sham court, actually a tyrannical court that Mary Brown is operating. So it is therefore ordered that the respondent, Mr. Jeffrey Younger, is excluded from possession of or access to the children. For all intents and purposes, what she is doing is terminating his rights as a normal father. Oh, he can have some rights, but it's got to be under the strict supervision by a supervisor designated by the petitioner. So in other words, Ann Georgilis, who is the petitioner, Ann Georgilis, who is the confused pediatrician, Ann Georgilis, who wants her son James to be called Luna, and Georgilis, who dresses 
the boy J James in girls clothes and presents him as a girl calls him Luna she also gets to choose the supervisor that is going to be uh, or the supervisor will be appointed by the court this is absolutely insane it is further ordered that the petitioner and George Ellis, once again the uh, confused pediatrician at best is permitted to withhold information from the respondent Jeffrey Damon Younger regarding the children's extracurricular activities, school functions, school enrollment, counseling, and medical care until further order of the court. This is a super destructive court. This is not a super parent court. And somehow uh, judge, or I should say tyrant Mary Brown, thinks that somehow she knows what's best for the children. This is absolutely ludicrous. And she's basically told the petitioner, Ann Georgilis, you don't even have to cooperate with Jeffrey Younger, the father. You don't have to tell him a thing. You don't have to tell him what the kids are doing. Uh, you don't have to tell him about the school functions, the extracurricular activities, the school enrollment, the counseling, the medical care. You don't have to do anything until I, tyrant judge Mary Brown, says that uh, you have to. Um, this is a sham. This, 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 this is why there are many people who are furious with these family courts. So this order was signed on August the 4th, 2021 at 4.15 p.m., Judge Mary Brown presiding. Now, I'm also going to say this. Uh, Judge Mary Brown, when she had her hearing that took place on July the 2nd, there were almost 990 people watching at one time. And I want to thank my friends um, who have been in contact with me. And I am pretty sure that these recordings will probably come out public so we could see, let the public see what takes place in these anti-family, these abusive courts in the state of Texas. That's it for right now. I have another video coming up in just a moment. Thank you.